So, um, so thank you for inviting me to, to this talk. Um, so today my uh, topic is animal calling sounds in uh, Krothjab. So uh, this, uh, this is, so animal calling sounds is when you call animals, no, you, you, you ask an animal to come and go. So it's like, it's also referred to as shepherd's calls. So this form of communication involves as the, the vocal summoning and uh, direction of domestic animals. So uh, let's see uh, by understanding and analyzing these calling sounds. Um, let's see what we can find um, about how uh, the crust of people see their uh, domestic animals. So um, the crust of language. So yeah, the name is again very difficult to pronounce. So the Chinese term is chuo si jia yu. Um, so um so these so like every other Yarong lang language, cross job is uh, very morphologically and phonologically complex. Um and um it is um a member of the Gyarongek Gyarong Yuzu um language group of the Burmo Changek branch, uh Chang Mian Yuzhi in the San Tibetan family. So um and the just a fun fact, the Tangut language, the Xisha Yu, um is also uh, recently uh, proven to be a uh, Yarongek language. Um, the language is spoken in uh, 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 Today we'll focus on two dialects of Krothyab, um, the Siyue Wu dialect with about 500 speakers and the Ragu Wobzi Ezhe Fang Yan with about 350 speakers. So these two dialects are largely uh, intelligible, but of course there are um, very interesting, subtle differences. Um, so Krostyab is endangered under the threat of two dominant languages around it, namely Amdo Tibetan, which is the big Tibetan language, the religious language. So the uh, Amdo Tibetan is one of the languages in contact with Krostyab, and the other is Southwestern Mandarin, Sinan Guanhua, which is uh, close to the official language of China, standard Mandarin. Uh, but these two languages are uh, very remote to, to Krostyab itself, um, despite the fact that Krostyab people are officially classified as Tibetans. Um, this is probably because they have heavily, they are heavily in influenced by the real Tibetans, um, their traditional costume, their food and their religions, uh, Tibetan Buddhism and the Bon religion. Um, so many native speakers think that they're Tibetans and that the important thing is to learn Tibetan for religious purposes and to learn Chinese for other practical purposes. Um, many of them do not consider uh, the cross job language as a very important language. They're mainly farmers and some and, and most of them are also have nomads. So um, they have their fields to grow crops um, and high in mountains, they also have their um, their pasture as well. So um, the hometown of Trostyab has uh, some of the most beautiful landscapes in China. And this is the Suyabu village um, with uh, uh, traditional hamlets hidden deep in the mountains. Um, and also this is a traditional house uh, in the Suyabu village, a five-story house. And uh, here is me working with this old lady on the top of the house. And another top of how you can see how high the valleys are up there. And also this um, is a field session in a local temple. Okay. And so since we will be talking about uh, animal calling sounds, it is necessary to first um, present the usual domestic animals kept by the Krostya people um, and their names in the local language. So let's begin with the cute and small animals. The cat is called Dor in the Wobzi dialect, and it's called Nyahu in the Suwewu dialect. Um, the dog um, is called Gda in both dialects. The chicken is called Baku in Wobzi and Baku in Suwewu. The pig, um, a very important member of the family, is called a Pau in uh, both dialects. The goat is called Ta in Wobzi and Tad in Suyabu with an additional final consonant. And the sheep is called Aye in, um, in both dialects. And there is a surprisingly uh, uh, precise subcategorization for cattle and yak. So cattle in general are co called Su, and the domestic cattle are called Bile, uh, Huang Miu, Bile, 
uh, the females are specifically called ni, and this ni is a San Tibetan cognate. It is related to niu in in Chinese. And there is a special kind of cattle, which is the offspring of a male yak and a cow. In Chinese, it, it is called pian niu. Um, and in English, I have no choice but to call them yak cow hybrids. The native name is xie, and there is a specific specific term for the females, um, which is bzuk. Uh, yaks are called abro, and female yaks are called kri. And uh, finally, the horse is called bro, and this word is somehow related to Chinese ma, uh, which is reconstructed into old Chinese mra. But uh, yeah, so here are um, some of the animal names. And uh, now, animal calling sounds. So the sounds that people use to call or to chase, to make come or let go your pets. Um, for instance, we usually use click sounds like to, to attract animals' attention. So these click sounds are also animal calling sounds. And they serve as a very crucial means of communication between cross speakers and their domestic animals, at least allegedly. And interestingly, these sounds often uh, deviate from um, direct correlation with the cries of animals, so they're not exactly onomatopoeic, um, not imitations of uh, animal cries. Um, in some instances, calling sounds partially are partially relate related to the local names attributed to the animals, and uh, more often than not, the calling sounds are not analyzable synchronically. Um, so in the following slides, I will present the calling sounds one by one. So how do cross people communicate with cats? Um, so, um, so in Wubzi, you call the, uh, the cats to come by uh, using the sound li 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 li. And in Suya Wu, you have the choice among li 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 or la 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 and tr tr tr, especially for the small cats. Uh, and these two dialects also have specific calling sounds for letting go cats. Uh, for example, you, in Wobzi, it is Kero, and in Suru, you will use uh, Cho, And uh, dogs, um, in Wobzi and Suru, we, we have approximately the same uh, calling sounds for dogs um, in general, Cha or Cha. Um, in Suru, we have an additional sound for small dogs or or puppies, which is Chu, 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 Chu. And when you need to get rid of them, you say so, so. Although in these areas, people tend to refrain from raising chicken, um, they do remember how they talk to chicken. Uh, in Wubzi, you can say goo 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 or choo 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 And in Suya Wu, you can do goo 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 So this seems onomatopoeic, which is um, counterintuitively uncommon. And the pig. Um, the main source of protein in cross-speaking societies, they dry and salt the pork, which can be preserved for a long time. So the animal calling sounds for pigs are ah or ah no 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 no. Now um, cattle. So cattle in general, we have ah ah, so which can be used for all cattle, but not yaks. Um, I'll explain it later. And for domestic cattle in Wubzi, we just add a B sound before the general term, bara, bara. And in Suya Wu, um, it is O bli 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 bli. And for the female, um, you use O nga 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 nga. And for the calf, you, you would say, ka 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 ka. So the small cattle. And to summon this offspring of yak and cow, we use vle 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 or uh, O vle 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 vle. And for the yak proper in Wubzi, um, we use jigu, jigu. And this term is confined uh, in, to the calf of the yak in the Suru dialect, jigu, jigu, for the small yaks. Um, and in Suru, there are more uh, half nomads than in Wubzi, so they distinguish between the male yak, uh, to which they use o, and the female, o, shu, o, shu. And to the gold, you call daka daka, and to the sheep, you go laga laga or o laga laga laga. So you may already um, feel something curious. They sound very similar, laga laga and daka daka. 
and I'll talk about it later. Um, so this is the sheep. Okay. And for the horse, we can say oh sho 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 or ah sho 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 sho. And and in Surya Wu, you can um also say siga siga to attract their attention. The horse in general. Um and in the Wubzi dialect, there is a general calling sound to chase all the animals, so which is chun chun. Um, but I didn't record this term in the other Siriwu dialect. Um, and now uh, let's uh, look at a small video. So actually, we can see that um, unless you have food in, in your hand, um, they won't react to your calling sounds, actually. <laughs> so, so much now for the presentation of calling sounds. Now let us come to the analysis part. So first, I would like to talk about the etymology of certain calling sounds that I can recognize. Um, so the calling sound for cat, which is li 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 or la 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 la, uh, this may be related a general term for the name of the cat in that region, which is Lili or Lulu. Uh, for example, in Japug, another uh, Yarungic language, the cat is Lulu. And in um, some local Amdu Tibetan as well, the cat is called Lili. Um, so it is really a cross-linguistic term um, that is spread through the region. Um, the baby dog calling sound Kyukyo could be modified from the Tibetan word for dog, which is Chi. So the Tibetan spelling actually reflects the pronunciation of Old Tibetan. Actually, in, in Amdo Tibetan, which is in contact with Shrostyab, it is pronounced k, so, uh, which is which sounds close to the baby dog calling sounds we have here, k, k. And the calling sound for female cattle, ngangangangang for the cows, is related to the nominal term for for female cattle, ni. And the chasing sound, uh, okay. And the oh, bleh, bleh, bleh for, for the cattle in general, which is obviously related to the term. Bleh. And uh, finally, the chasing sound for dog song is clearly borrowed from uh, the past tense of uh, the Tibetan uh, verb to go, song to go. Um, it is interesting that they um, use Tibetan loan words for animal calling sounds um, as, they, as if they use the uh, prestigious Tibetan language to talk to animals, especially they use the Tibetan word to impolitely ask a dog to leave, some, some like this. So, um, but I talked about this uh, this with an anthropologist, and he said that um, in um, some other cultures in in the world, like Madagascar, uh, people tend to use words in French, the colonial language, to talk to um, their animals while communicate with. Uh, humans in uh, Malagasy. So I find it quite amusing. I, and I thought about it uh, for a while. And I also find that a lot of swear words in Krostyab are borrowed from Tibetan, actually. So um, uh, now let's ask ourselves, what do the, the animal calling sounds tell us? Can they perhaps reflect a bit of the Krostyab world in the past? Or um, I think you have already noticed that there are uh, similarities between the calls and this, these similarities may, must mean something and they must tell us something about the Krostya people. To analyze them, we, we first need to uh, eliminate uh, calls derived from animal names and borrowing from Tibetan uh, as they pr provide a little information on this matter. So the calling sounds in the previous slides are to be excluded for this purpose. Um, what interests us are, us are the non-analyzable forms 
um, which are most likely to trace back to the proto language and uh, implies the worldview of the people. So before we go into that, let me uh, talk about to uh, uh, introduce you to some linguistic concepts. So lenition and fortition. So lenition is often described as the weakening or uh, softening of a consonant. Um, it can be uh, exemplified by the uh, uh, by, for example, uh, from Latin to, to French. So you have catena and the T sound uh, between two vowels uh, um, becomes the D, a D sound, which sounds softer and weaker uh, because it's more sonorous. So uh, in old French, you have chadena and then because it, uh, and, and then the D sound becomes softer and softer. And finally, uh, it disappears between two, two vowels. So in modern French, you have uh, shen. And fortition is the opposite uh, uh, process. Process, so it's the strengthening or hardening of a consonant. For example, in a lot of, uh, in some English varieties, the th voice th sound is the uh, is actually pronounced with a d sound. Like you can say that instead of that. Um, so now we know what lenition and fortition are. So we can look deeper into the phonology of the animal calling sounds in Krostka. Um, in the calling sounds presented earlier, it is not difficult to find a pattern with two vowels, ah, and a uvular sound, a uh, uvular consonant in the middle. We present it with the pattern C-A-Q-A, with an uppercase C representing any consonant, and an uh, uppercase Q between the two A's, um, which is a uvular consonant. So, um, so let's look at the table there. Um, the first two lines are about ovines, the goat and the sheep. So um, you have taka taka uh, for the goat and laha laha for the sheep. They both follow the pattern CAQA. And the first consonant in both cases are um, alveolar or dental consonants, namely a T sound and an L sound. So we can say that it's a subtype of CAQA. Um, we can replace the uppercase C with the uppercase T representing an alveolar or dental consonant. Um, so we can observe that for the goat, the consonants are plosives. So the T sound and a uvular uh sound, which are um, definitely hard sounds. And for the sheep, the consonants are the corresponding soft sounds um, with an L sound and the voice uvular fricative uh sound. So it's taqa with the lenited or soft version, lara. So everything is the same except for the voicing, the for the sonority or the softness of the sounds. So by changing from soft to hard or vice versa, um, through lenition or fortition, uh, we can transition from the goat to the sheep. So it might be that the goat is kind of leaner than the sheep. So we can see bones uh, giving the impression that the goat is harder than the sheep. So you can see that in uh, this image. So the goat is leaner and the, uh, the sheep is, um, is uh, softer. And uh, next, the last two lines, uh, the same pattern with the lenited uvular uh, consonants for bovines, for the cattle, we add a B at the beginning. So aha, from aha to baha, which might be related to the word for uh, cattle or ox, ble, so Baha. Um, so we can see that this CAQA is actually a general pattern for animals like oxen, sheep, and goat. So these animals share the same phonological pattern of calling sounds. That is to say, cross their people may believe that these animals should be addressed with similar phonology, uh, just, a, just a, that as if they spoke approximately the same language, but different dialects. So we need to use similar sounds to to call them. So therefore, standing in the crust of people's shoes, all animals uh, whose calling sounds belong to this pattern should be classified under the same branch. Now the yak and the horse, um, we have another pattern uh, characterized by fricative or affricative and a fricative in r. So for example, the female yak, has these two sounds, and the one for the young yak, is almost the same as the calls for uh, the horse, uh, so for yak 
and Siga for horse. So again, why these animals have the same phonological pattern of calling sounds? So according to the logic of the previous slide, we may assume that the Krustya people believe that horses and yaks actually speak the same language, but different dialects. So they link horses and yaks together. And another thing that needs, um, so the compound form is actually very common in Krustya. So, um, so the original meaning of this word was more likely the excrement of a species comprising comprising both the goat and the yak. And with time, the component in the middle uh, became obscure and uh, only the first part is recognizable, triggering a narrowing of the meaning. So let's look at the two types of excrements. So actually they don't actually share the, uh, uh, they don't have any morphological resemblance. The goat's excrement is um, in the form of small pallets droppings while the yak is just cow dung. But uh, why they link uh, goats and and yaks? So the hypothesis is that the goat um, and the yak, um, along with other animals like cattle and horses, belong to a single species. The two representative animals were chosen to name their excrement. And thus, I refer to the species as the Sakraru, here ru corresponds to, to, to the Tibetan term rik, meaning species. So um, with the related calling sounds and the term for excrement indicating the species, we arrive at this. Um, it is not a real tree. As you can see, there is ambiguity for the sheep. Um, so the sheep belongs to two sub-branches. On the left, the sub-branch uh, T-A-Q-A. -A, uh, so it aligns with the gold, so it's Lara. And on the right, um, the one with Lenition, it has the Lenition, so uh, it with uh, it is aligned also with the cattle, Bara and Lara. So uh, therefore, the position of the sheep is ambiguous according to the Krostya people. On the one hand, it is similar to the goat, and on the other, it resembles the ox. And uh, on the other side, all the way to the right, there is something surprising. The yak and the horse are classified under the same branch based on their calling sounds, sig and jig, instead of classifying the yak with the domestic cattle. And also for the hybrid of yak and cow, um, it has to be in the middle. It is classified, but it is classified more closely to the cattle because uh, we can use the general calling sound for cattle, aha, aha, to call them, but we cannot use the aha, aha sound for the yaks, actually. So the hybrid of yak and cow is actually used for agricultural purposes as they're stronger than normal cattle, but yaks aren't used for this purpose. So now let's look at the modern scientific taxonomy. The horse is classified in a completely different uh, branch than the the others, um, and of course the yak is grouped with the the, um, the bovine. So, uh, in comparison, um, what are the major differences between the Krostya taxonomy and the scientific taxonomy? Uh, notably, Krostya places the sheep under the bovine and caprine. Um, so this is a unique perspective. Uh, on the relationship between these animals. And uh, also the yaks and horses are classified together in Krostyab, while in the scientific taxonomy, they're, they're separated. And also there is an ambiguous categorization of yak-cow hybrid. Um, they find themselves straddling two, um, two branches in the Krostyab taxonomy. So um, the question is what logic governs the Krostyab uh, taxonomy. So what's the logic behind this um, taxonomy? So to understand this rationale behind this uh, unique taxonomy, um, so um, actually unlike the other domestic animals, we find the uh, uh, recognition of functional overlaps between yaks and horses um, because they are uh, pivotal figures in uh, the nomadic way of life. So uh, they both serve as essential pack animals. Um, both species contribute 
significantly to the nomads mobility as well as their uh, uh, livelihood and uh, horses and yaks um, so they are pack animals right and uh, their roles actually uh, extend into recreation with yak fighting and horse races um, which are very important um, in the um, in the life in the life of um, the Gyarongik people so um, this is a fusion of uh, practicality and cultural significance. So, um, and this actually sheds light, for, uh, according to me, shed light on why Krostyap places yaks and horses under share branch in its uh, taxonomy. And this CAQA branch revolves around uh, cattle-like animals. And it is also noteworthy that uh, goats and sheep are now seldom kept. Cattle, actually, they play a central role in various agricultural practices. And cattle, sheep, and goats, actually, they form a continuum of likeness or appearance. Um, cattle look much like sheep, and sheep look like goats. And the distinction between sheep and goat is through the impression they leave to cross the people. Goats are harder with dakka dakka, and sheep look softer with la la. So uh, cross the people uh, employ a multi-factor process to classify their domestic animals reflected in their corresponding calling sounds. So this is a process that goes actually beyond mere visual assessments, but um, it is also related to uh, the, their local culture and their worldview. So. Um, so I think um, languages actually serve as a means to facilitate understanding among individual uh, as a tool of communication. So there exists a, there exists a need, natural need for um, classification. And there are very uh, numerous uh, classification systems that are unique to languages such, such as colors or different languages of different classification colors. And in Croatia, we have actually have a, have a unique and very specific classification of animals that they don't know themselves, but they can, but it can be reflected in their animal calling sounds. So I think this is uh, something very uh, intriguing and very interesting to talk about. So uh, that's basically what I uh, wanted to share today. Thank you very much.